Bismillah Rahman Rahim. So, uh, first of all, welcome to all of you in this uh, video tutorial in which uh, I will discuss the topic of the clinical toxicology. In this topic, I will discuss the uh, different aspects of the uh, clinical toxicology uh, like the so the outline of the uh, my uh, this presentation uh, lectures with the what is the introduction of the toxicology means uh, what is the definition of the toxicology and this may join further or it is a behind discuss in the initial stage the uh, toxicology was the branch of the pharmacology but later on, uh, due to the increase uh, in the incidence of the toxins, uh, they became a separate branch. Now we study it in a separate branch, that is the toxicology, and then uh, further different branches of the toxicology, like the clinical toxicology, the uh, environmental toxicology, etc. So this uh, we will discuss in the introduction section to the clinical toxicology. Then uh, we will discuss that uh, what is actually the different reasons of the uh, poisoning. And uh, in this, uh, I will discuss the different intentional and the uh, incidental, uh, even the uh, most commonly the accidental reasons for the uh, different types of the poisoning that may be the organophosphate poisoning, etc. And then uh, we will proceed toward the uh, identify. So then uh, what would be the different myers through which we can uh, properly manage the patients of the uh, toxins or the toxicology. So, uh, so initially, uh, there were the uh, different types of the, now, uh, as you know, that there are different types of the uh, toxins or poisons, and they may have the uh, different signs and symptoms. And for all different types of the toxin, we don't have the uh, exact antidote that reverse back the effect of that. Uh, specific toxins on the body. So first of all, we will uh, differentiate the difference between that what is the difference uh, between the poisons and the venom. Because poison and venoms, these both are also the uh, toxins and they can badly affect our normal physiology and even uh, can cause the uh, death on the individual as well. So both uh, actually the poisons and also the venom are the poisonous agent and, and they both affect the normal physiology of the body and uh, causes different changes within the normal physiology of the human body and even can cause the uh, death. So the main difference, uh, if we uh, discuss here, the difference between the poison and the venoms is will be this, like that the uh, poisons is a substance that we uh, mostly ingest it, like you must hear uh, about the food poisonings like the botulinum uh, toxins, etc., that we ingested. And then uh, the second is the uh, mostly the poisons we inhaled it because there are different types of the allergens that is present in our uh, nat uh, natural environments. And they can also cause the allergy as well as some uh, toxicity. So, uh, on the different types of the fungal spores that we uh, when in uh, inhale, so that can cause a lot of troubles to the individuals. So, and then uh, the now what is the difference between the venoms? So mostly venoms are injected or uh, some uh, some creatures bite on us and through that like the uh, snake button or even the uh, some other spider button, etc. So uh, actually the venoms are uh, the substances that uh, are mostly uh, someone inject us these substances that may be either the drugs like the, uh, the dose of the digoxin is increased, so that may cause the, uh, a lot of problems. As you know, that the digoxin is the uh, positive inotropics and negative chronotropic agents, and then they cause the uh, different severe types of the. So, this was regarding the difference between the poisons and the venoms. And both of them are actually the uh, toxins and they can uh, badly affect the normal physiology of the human body and cause uh, changes within the uh, central nervous system as well as in the cardiovascular system or even in the GIT. And in some rare cases, uh, when the dose is uh, as much higher amount, so that may cause the uh, death of the individuals. Also, there are different types of the toxins, but mainly if we consider on the basis of the different signs and symptoms, 
so there are many five types of the different uh, toxins and then we treat according uh, according to their symptoms so the first one is the uh, that is the uh, cholinergic agents and the different signs and symptoms of the cholinergic agents that it causes the different uh, cholinergic crisis like the uh, decrease in the heart rate and BP, etc. Or even uh, there is the constriction of the fields and also uh, there is the excessive uh, diaphoresis or secretion from the body. In every type of the toxin, the first approach uh, to identify the cause of the toxins are the different features. Like the first feature we observe is the, is the eye of the individuals. Either uh, there is a gross major fifield constriction we have. So there may be involvement of the some uh, cholinergic toxins. Agar wahan par jo hai mediasis hua hai, mean people dilate hua hai. So then uh, we move toward the some adrenergic or uh, even uh, some anti-cholinergic agents that are involved in uh, in such type of the toxins. And then uh, we move toward the uh, skin. So the in the skin we observe the uh, secretions that either the skin is diaphoretic or not or the uh, color of the skin is uh, pale or is some reddish, etc. And then the other symptom we observe is the secretions like the uh, defecation and urination, etc. And from that, uh, we identify the cause of the toxins. Okay, you can use the toxins eh? uh, uh, on the basis of that. Then we can use uh, the sufficient and the proper antidote, and then we will manage the patients accordingly. And the last uh, different approach, uh, last one is the uh, we observe some vital sign like the BP, heart rate, uh, etc., and pulse rate of the patients. So these uh, main fear uh, four features. First of all, we observe in every types of the patient. कि हम जो है पहले देखते हैं कि उसकी आई की जो पिफिल है आई वो कंस्ट्रिक्ट हुई है या उसमें जो है वो डायलेट हुआ है एंड द नेक्स्ट फीचर इज द वी ऑब्जर्व द स्किन कि आई स्किन की जो है व्हाट इज द स्किन कैरेक्टराइजेशन एंड देन वी मूव टू ऑल द डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ द सिक्रीशन कि आई सिक्रीशन जो है वो नॉर्मल है या जो है एक्सेसिव सिक्रीशन हो रही है जिस तरह कॉलेनर जो क्राइसिस में जो है एक्सेसिव सिक्रीशन होती है डिपिकेशन भी होती है यूरिनेशन भी होती है In the last, we observe the some car, uh, vital signs like the heart rate and the BP respiratory rate, or even the pulse rate, uh, like in the uh, like uh, barbiturates uh, poisoning. Uh, there is the respiratory depression, and uh, if we uh, can't handle the patient properly, then, then that barbiturate toxins may cause death of the individual as well. So uh, now let's uh, move toward our different types of the toxin. Although there are a lot of uh, number of the toxins, but mainly if we consider then uh, there are five types of the main uh, different toxins and then we uh, treat and manage the patients accordingly. So the second one is the, um, the first one was the uh, cardinergic agents in which the different medication and different uh, poisons include like the arginophosphate poisoning, that is the one of the most common types of the poisoning that include in the uh, cardinal crisis and the other is uh, the um, and uh, the other one is the uh, adrenergic or the sympathomimetic agents that increase the heart rate bp uh, respiratory rates or even uh, some uh, dilation of the pupil but the skin and the secretion that will be i think uh, normal or slightly uh, above from the normals. And the other different uh, other types of the main toxins is the uh, anticholinergic agents. The symptoms of the adrenergic and the uh, anticholinergic agents are quite similar, but uh, there is a, a, diff a slight difference in some of the extent uh, in the in case of the symptoms. And the fourth one is the then the uh, sedative and hypnotic agents. जिस तरह के आपको सबको पता होगा कि डेट इज रिगार्डिंग दी बेंजोडाइजिपिन एंड दी बार्बिचुरेट्स एंड देट इज मोस्ट वाइडली यूज्ड फॉर दी डिफरेंट इंसोमिया कंडीशन और इवन द बेंजोडाइजिपिन कैन आल्सो बी यूज्ड इन दी इंसाइटी एट्सेट्रा सो देट डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ दी सिलेटिव एंड हेपनोटिक एजेंट्स दे कैन आल्सो कॉज दी डिफरेंट टाइम्स एंड इवन दे कैन कॉज दी 
suppose uh, the barbiturates can mimic the GABA receptors and it can cause the uh, irreversible coma and uh, eventually the uh, death of the patient. And the fifth one is the different opioids, that is the uh, analgesic agents that are most commonly used and severe pain um, and also that I would really use it, use it for the sense of real beings or euphoria. And this is the most common uh, IV drug uh, abusers uh, are the uh, substance that are, the, that are abused and misused. So uh, this was uh, just a slight background regarding the, the toxicity and the toxicology that the actually the toxins are the agents that bear the effect on normal physiology and uh, it include either the poisons and also the uh, different types of the venoms. Uh, they can make different poison in the can mostly do uh, we ingest or inhale, while venom is mostly either bitten or injected. In this way, there are different types of the uh, toxins that uh, in five different categories may ask the, like the uh, cholinergic agents, the uh, anticholinergic, uh, sorry, the cholinergic agents, the anticholinergic agents, and then the sympathomimetics, and then the uh, sedative and hypnotics. And then the last one is the, uh, the opioid agents that may cause the somnolence and a lot of uh, different uh, sinus uh, depression property and may cause the death of the patient if we can't reverse back the patient condition. So for that, we mostly use the different types of the antidote like the naloxone, the naltrexone, and the nalmethine, etc. So now let's proceed towards the definition sections. So this was the outline that uh, how then we will identify the cause of the uh, poisoning or the poisoning agents because if we identify the cause, then we will manage the patients accordingly. And then uh, the next approach is uh, to decrease the absorption of the uh, poison. So we can decrease the absorption through a lot of uh, ways like we can also use the in, uh, induction of vomitings. Uh, we can also use the gastric leverage and the, uh, we may use the uh, natural antidote that is the uh, activated charcoal. And then uh, the next approach is uh, to, uh, to enhance the uh, elimination of the poisons from the body because if we uh, eliminate the poisons from the body, so that will be not absorbed and uh, then it will not cause the uh, disturbances of the normal physiology. And then for the elimination, we use different approaches like the changes the pH of the urine or even using some dialy dialysis technique that may be either the uh, hemodialysis or the peritoneal dialysis. And then we can also use some uh, cathartics and the purgative agents. And then uh, we can use uh, eventually the most uh, important uh, substance that is the antidote. And then uh, we will, I will give a touch to the different types of the toxins like the uh, benzodiazepine what would be the uh, and their antidotes and then uh, some barbiturates and then and their antidote and then the different types of the toxins and their antidote. We will discuss that in, uh, in, in this sections. And then I will proceed to all the uh, supporting miles for the uh, poisoning patients that what would be the uh, supporting miles and how we will properly handle the uh, poisoning patients. And then at the last, the most important thing is the uh, rule of the chelating agents and the uh, poisoning. As we all know that there are the different types of the heavy metals that may be the either the, either the uh, lead, the mercury and arsenic and they can cause a lot of trouble to the human body. So for that we use the uh, chelating agents and can uh, then uh, a complex is formed and uh, such type of the heavy metals are then uh, eliminated in the from the body. So now let's proceed to the definition introduction section. So actually toxicology is the branch of science in which we deal the study and treatment of the poison. So this is the main thing in toxicology. We are discussing the study of different types of the poison and what would be the treatment of such type of the uh, poison. Like the uh, suppose the MDL is the arginophosphate poisoning. <clears throat> so then what are the different signs and symptoms of that uh, uh, poisoning and uh, how we will use the atropine that is the uh, antidote for the arginophosphate poisonings and how we will manage the arginophosphate poisoning patients. 
And then uh, let's proceed there. Earlier toxicology was actually the uh, integral uh, part of the pharmacology, but nowadays due to the increased incidence, it is now the uh, separate branch of the science. So uh, initially it was actually the branch of the pharmacology, but nowadays uh, as the incidence or uh, the cases of the uh, toxins or the poison increases, so due to that, and now it is a separate branch in which the toxicology is further divided into a lot of different types of the branches that may be either the clinical toxicology, the uh, environmental toxicology, and the other one. So here uh, we will discuss the definition of the toxicology and then uh, sub branches of the toxicology as we have already studied that initially it was the uh, a branch of the pharmacology that is the actually the uh, study of the drugs and, and this include the pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics simply means what the uh, drug does to the body and then uh, what the body does to the drug that is the pharmacology but as the cases increases so now it is a separate branch and uh, then the toxicology is further subdivided into uh, sub branches so if we uh, define the toxicology so it is the branch of the science uh, that deal mainly with the uh, study of the poisons uh, that include the mechanism of actions, mean how it affects the uh, normal physiology. And then let me take the one point. And then that what are the different uh, adverse effects of the that poisons on the human body? And then how we will treat the various condition that is produced by the such type of the poisoning. So simply mean toxicology is a branch of the science in which we study the poison. And that study include the mechanism of action, the adverse effect, and the treatment. Now, uh, the poison can be from the either from the environment, industry, homes, or even some pharmacological substances can also be act like a poisons. Is, uh, if we uh, didn't use the drug properly according to the approved guideline, uh, and if the dose increases uh, drastically so that uh, drugs uh, or the uh, medicines can then cause uh, further destruction and may cause the um, a lot of, a lots of troubles. So a uh, branch of toxicology is further divided into the following branches like the uh, experimental toxicology. And this experimental toxicology, it is actually the branch of toxicology in which we study the toxic effect of different various chemicals on the biological systems. So it is quite clear in the experimental toxicology, we uh, mainly study the uh, different toxic effect of the uh, different uh, chemicals on the biological agents. While in the clinical toxicology, this is our uh, relevant topic in which uh, we uh, discuss the diagnosis and the treatment of the poisoning in the human beings. Here our main concern is the human being. In the human being, first of all, we uh, diagnose or identify the cause of the poison and then uh, we properly treat or manage the patients. And the last one is the uh, environmental toxicology. So here it is actually the identification and elimination of the uh, different types of the environmental poisons. So uh, this was the uh, sub branches of the toxicology. Now let's proceed to toward the definition of the poisons and the antidote. So uh, uh, poisons are actually unwanted, unwanted substances which produces harmful effect uh, on the body and sometimes can be fatal, means sometimes it can cause the death. And what are antidotes? So uh, the antidotes are the substances that are used to uh, reverse the harmful effect on the poisons. So antidote, how antidote works? So antidote will either uh, prevent the absorption of the poisons or it can uh, inactivate the uh, poisons or even antagonizing, mean uh, binding to the receptor and there will be the competitive antagonism or the uh, non-competitive antagonism for the receptors. And, and through this way, the uh, antidote can uh, reverse back the action of the different types of the poisons. So uh, here we uh, clearly mentioned that the uh, poisons are unwanted substances that cause some harmful effect to the human body and that harmful effect may be in some cases the uh, fatal as well. And then uh, we proceed toward the antidote. So the mechanism of action antidote is either it prevent the absorption or inactivating the poisons 
or uh, even antagonizing the action of the poisons. So now let's uh, proceed toward the uh, some uh, different types of the poisoning. So now let's proceed toward the different types of the poisons and the principles of management or the treatment of such type of the poisonings. So uh, here, first of all, we will define again the poisons and then, so now we will proceed toward the definition of the poisons. The poisons actually are the substances uh, that cause disturbances uh, to the organisms uh, in which extent either through the uh, some chemical reactions or either through the uh, molecular scales mean at the molecular level it cause some changes and when a sufficient quantity is absorbed by an organism to it causes both of these like the uh, some chemical reactions or even the uh, the different types of the uh, the molecular or either in the uh, molecular scales, it can cause uh, some uh, disturbances to the normal human body. Now let's proceed toward the uh, poison substances are actually when introduced into the uh, body and relatively small amounts uh, causes some structural damage, structural or the functional disturbances. So it is quite clear from this that the uh, poisonous agent when absorbed in the uh, sufficient quantity, so it will cause the disturbances to the human body in a not soft way. That may, uh, may be either the structural changes or even the uh, some functional changes or even uh, through the some chemical reactions and either through the some molecular uh, scales reactions. So now let's proceed toward the uh, reasons of the uh, poisoning. So there are a lot of reasons for the poisoning. The first one may be either the, and the most important one is the due to the uh, accidental reason and then the incidental, this is by the way a slight difference from the accidental reason. This is we can also refer at the by chance and then the iatrogenous that may be due to the some drugs and then uh, the intentional reason and this is the most uh, common reason of the poisonings that 90% of the all uh, chemical related deaths are due to these substances like the uh, barbiturates because it causes the respiratory depression and further uh, some other neuro neurological changes and eventually the death of the individuals uh, are the suicidal poisoning that the spleen and this can also cause the, a lot of troubles and then the uh, ethanols and then the carbon monoxide poisonings because this is one of the chemicals that binds uh, there is a competition from the uh, oxygens to bind to the homoglobin so the carbon monoxide is bind more frequently to the hemoglobin as compared to the oxygens. And then uh, there will be the hypoxia within the body and that hypoxia can eventually lead to uh, the death of the individuals. So these are the different reasons that may be either the accidental or the by chance or the drug induced or the, even the intentional reason because 90% of the poisoning is due to the intentional reasons. Means someone used, uh, used it for the uh, suicide, suicidal attempt etc. And the most important and frequently used uh, different types of the poisoning agents are the barbiturates, salicylate, ethanol, and carbon monoxides. Now let's proceed toward the general principles uh, that is used for the management of the poisoning. As I have already mentioned and discussed in my previous uh, slides that uh, there are different approaches, but uh, the main approach of the toxicology is to provide basic guidelines and to treat both the acute and the severe poisoning cases. The symptoms of the poisoning may be, it may be very, but certain common syndromes that may suggest the particular class of the poisons. And from that particular class of the poison, then we must use the uh, proper and specific antidote. The diagnosis of the poisoning is usually the uh, uh, primary clinicals, but uh, poisoning, uh, but for the poisonings, we must use uh, some type of the test like the thirds and the urine test. Uh, actually, the treatment of the poisoning is the supportive, but uh, specific antidote may uh, be necessary uh, in, uh, in a few cases. Now, the uh, prevention includes the uh, labeling of drug containers properly and then keeping the poisonous substances out of reach of the children. Just uh, you know that every medicine uh, hota hai, keep out of children's because if uh, drugs, if a child suppose 
uh, H1 blocker would uh, so that can cause the coma, even the red of the that individual. This can allow uh, the H1 blocker to uh, go further with uh, neurological changes or even the psychomotor changes. Uh, are the, uh, they, they, they can also cause such type of a problem as well. So now let's proceed to the next slide. So uh, this is the main approach to the uh, poisoning. First of all, we must identify the uh, exit cause of the poisons. So the first step of the treatment of the to identify the cause of the poison. The cause of the poison can be known from either from the uh, patient himself uh, or from the uh, if he is conscious, if the patient is conscious, so we can uh, identify the cause of the poison from the patient himself. Or this step help in uh, deciding the specific treatment because if we uh, know the cause, then uh, suppose uh, the patient is uh, taking some organic phosphate poisoning. So from there, the antidote is the uh, atropines. So uh, if we use the atropines, so the cholinergic crisis will be uh, decreased and then uh, we can sufficiently manage the patient accordingly. And then uh, the next step is uh, the, the decrease the uh, absorption of the poison. When we decrease the absorption of the poison, so that poison will be not absorbed, and, and then it can not cause the uh, disturbances or some toxic changes within the human body. So the first approach to uh, decrease the absorption is the uh, induction of vomitings, that we must induce vomiting uh, to the patients. So for that, mostly the uh, syrup of the peacock is preferred emetic agent for uh, inducing the vomitings. And the dose of that uh, apicoc syrup is the uh, 30 ml for the adults and uh, 15 ml for the uh, children. But so the emesis is contraindicated in some rare cases like the uh, comatose patients or even in the, when the patient is taking some caustic poisonings uh, like the petroleum, the sedate, etc. So in that case, the uh, Emesis or the induction of vomiting is contraindicated either um, when the patient uh, is uh, when there is the risk of the convulsion. So in that case, also the poisoning is contraindicated. So simply mean other harms when patients go uh, vomiting induced kind of, So for that we use the epicoc syrup, and for adult we use uh, 30 ml, and for child the 15 ml. But this emesis is contraindicated in some cases like the comatose patient. The uh, cost uh, when the patient is taking some petroleum distillate or when the patient is the uh, in convulsion. So, in this case, we didn't use the um, emetics agents like the epicoc syrup. And then, this next approach to decrease the absorption of the poisoning is the uh, we must perform the gastric leverage, I mean, washing the uh, GIT or the stomach of the patients. So, the gastric leverage is an important uh, measure to control poisonings. When it occurs due to some uh, aromatic substances, especially uh, the perfumes, uh, it also helps when a message is contraindicated. Then we must use the uh, gastric lavage to wash the uh, all, all, all the GIT of the uh, individual through some irrigating solutions or the even some other substances. Uh, I, when the poisoning is uh, some perfumes or the uh, message is contraindicated in such type of patient as you already mentioned that MS is contraindicated in some circumstances like the when the patient is in convulsion or when uh, he or she takes some petroleum distillates or when the patient is in coma. So in that case, the MS is contraindicated. So for that, then we must use the gastric leverage. And then uh, we can also decrease the absorption through the use of the activated charcoal. That it is a universal antidote because the activated charcoal, they absorb the poison and also it uh, delay the uh, gastrointestinal absorption of the poison as well. So the activated charcoal work mainly by two ways. In which two ways? The first one is it is absorb the poison, so the absorption will be decreased. And uh, by the way, the absorption and absorption is a separate phenomena. Absorption is actually a surface phenomena, and the absorption is uh, a separate phenomena. And then uh, the other way to which the uh, activated charcoal work is the as it delay the uh, GIT motility. It is helpful in the treatment of the poisonings from the aromatics or alkalides compound. So this was the uh, three main approach through which we can decrease the uh, absorption of the poisoning. The first one was the induction of vomiting. The second was the gastric leverage, and the third one was the use of activated charcoal. 
The third approach uh, to manage the patient of the poisoning is the hastening or uh, enhancing the elimination of the poisons from the body. So when we increase the uh, elimination of the poisons, so uh, it can help and uh, minimize the uh, toxicity of their specific poisons. So for that, we also use uh, some uh, different approaches like the alternating the pH of urines. So in simple mean, uh, in poisoning from basic substances, uh, like the uh, amphetamines and the quinine that are basic substances. So for such type of the patient, we must use uh, some acidic substances to eliminate the uh, to eliminate such type of the substances. Like the uh, amphetamine and quinines, these are basic substances. So for this, we must make the urine acidic. When the urine is acidic, so these substances will be not absorbed and that will be eliminated in the urines. Uh, this way, in contrast, if there is acidic substance, just like uh, acidic silates or phenobarbital, then we have to make urines ko jo hai, wo basic. If the urine is basic, ban jayegi, so then their substances like the acidic silates and the phenobarbital will be not absorbed and it will excrete it in the urine. The next approach is the using some dialysis machine. So the peritoneal dialysis is uh, very popular nowadays and used in the treatment of the methanol poisoning that is the alcohol and also in uh, some rare snake bite as well we use the uh, peritoneal uh, dialysis and then the hemodialysis is more superior technique because it is non-invasive in nature while the peritoneal is invasive but uh, the hemodialysis requires some um, sophisticated uh, cares the peritoneal dialysis and hemodialysis have limited use in the intoxication of different chemicals because uh, <clears throat> as we all know that both the uh, hemodialysis and the peritoneal dialysis both of them are the invasive techniques but uh, we use mostly the peritoneal dialysis in the methanol and the snake poisoning <clears throat> so this is now the third approach through which we can decrease the uh, uh, sorry increase the elimination of the poison that is the use of the some uh, cathartic agents. By the way, this agent is also used in the constipation. And you must tell me in the comment section then what is the difference between the cathartics and uh, purgatives. So actually, the cathartics are used to enhance the uh, elimination of toxic substances, and it is used mainly in the ingestion of the hydrocarbons and some uh, enteric coated tablets. Uh, so mostly the sodium sulfate is used uh, as a, a frequent uh, cathartic agents. So the next approach is the use of the antidote, and this is the most important step to uh, manage the patient of the poisoning. In this case, uh, there are certain specific antidote for the treatment of the specific class of the poisonings. Uh, here are uh, some list of the poisonings and uh, their specific antidote. But the, mess, the most important steps in the managing the patients of the poisoning is using the uh, specific antidote against the uh, poisons. So now we will discuss some uh, poisons, or toxins, and their antidote. So uh, in this, uh, we have discussed some different types of the toxins and then uh, the antidote like the acetaminophene or the peristamol. So uh, it is a, a toxin and it can cause the toxicity of the liver through the uh, NAPQ, that is the N-acetyl P-benzoquinine amylene, and uh, it causes the toxicity, by the way, in the three phases, like the phase one, phase two, and the phase three. We will discuss this in the upcoming slides, by the way. So the antidote for the acetaminophen is the N-acetyl cysteine, while for the anticholinergic agents, the antidote should be the uh, physostigmine, and for the benzodiazepine, that is the sedative and hypnotic agents. Uh, as we already mentioned, that there are different types of the uh, poisoning or the toxins that may be the cholinergic, anticholinergic, the sedative and hypnotic, opioid, etc. So, for the uh, plomazinil, is used as antidote for the uh, benzodiazepine. And then for the uh, black real spider bite, by the way, this is the venom. And the start, we've already studied that the toxin may be either the poisons or the venom. So for that, we use the uh, electrodectus antivenom as an antidote. 
and then the botulism poisoning. So this should be, uh, this is the venom by the way, and this is the poisons because this is involved the food poisoning like the botulism poisoning. So for that we use the, um, the uh, botulinum anti toxins for the botulism poisoning. And then for the beta blockers like the selective and non-selective beta blockers like the propranolol, uh, esmolol, or the etimolol, pendolol, etc. For that, uh, when, uh, when the overdose of such uh, drugs occur, uh, as we already mentioned that the uh, one of the reasons of the poisoning is also the hydrogenous, mean some drugs can also act as a, as a poisons. So for that, uh, for the beta blockers, we use uh, the glucagon as an antidote, that is the uh, opposite of the insulin. So it will increase the blood glucose level. And then uh, for the calcium channel blockers like the abeltazine, uh, uh, nephrifine, uh, verafamil, etc., we use uh, the uh, ca calcium or the IV insulin in high doses with IV glucose or the IV fat emulsion is used as an antidote for the calcium channel blocker. And then for the carbamates poisoning, this may a lot of different substances are there. For that, uh, we can use either the uh, atropine are the uh, pralidoxime and we can also use the uh, chloride or the carbamate poisoning like the arginophosphate poisoning. And then, uh, and the most common type of the poisoning agent is the by the way, arginophosphate. And then the crotaline uh, snake bite. For that, uh, we use the uh, crotaline polyvalent immune FAB. Simply mean the uh, antibody is used for the Crotaline snake bite, and then for the cyanide poisonings, uh, we use the hydroxycobalamin or even the cyanide antidote kit that include the amyl nitrate, the uh, sodium nitrite, and uh, sodium thiosulfate. That uh, actually, uh, through the chemical reaction, reverse back the um, poisonous nature of this cyanide. And then uh, some vegetalis toxins and glycosides like the lizaxine digitoxin and the pox flow, etc. This can also cause severe arrhythmia and, uh, and can even put the patient at risk. So for this, we use the uh, digibine or the specific digoxin, specific FEB fragment, especially the FE, uh, digibine is used for as an antidote for the uh, digitalis uh, poisoning. And then for the ethylene glycol, uh, we use the uh, fomifizol as an antidote. Now let's proceed to the next uh, poisons and their antidote. For the heavy metal, mostly we use the different types of the chelating agents like the uh, dimercaprol or the uh, dimercaprosaxanic acid. We will discuss this in the uh, in the section of the chelating agents and their rule in the poisons. And for the iron overdose, we use the uh, diferosamine as an antidote. By the way, this diferosamine is uh, used IV but we can use uh, oral agent like the DPD prone as well. And then for the anti-convulsion drug like the, uh, sorry, iso anti tb drug, um, first line anti tb drug, that is the iso -NIZ. So for this, we can use the uh, freely dioxime that is vitamin B6 because the iso -NIZ can cause the peripheral neuropathy. And to prevent uh, that, we use the vitamin B6 on the pyridoxine as an antidote. And then for the methanol, we use the either the formifizone or the ethanol. And then for the uh, methemoglobin forming agents, just mention here further aniline dyes or even some local anesthetics like the uh, cocaine, etc., or even some nitrates like the uh, certain different nitrates used over here. Nitrites are even for the penicetine, that is one of the insert, and for the sulfonamide. These all are actually the methemoglobins forming agent because. Uh, are from the methemoglobins. So for that, we use the dye that is the uh, methylene uh, blue dye. And for the uh, methotrexate, this is the uh, anti folate agents and one of the anti cancer drugs. By the way, uh, sorry, this is not anti folate. By the way, this is the one of the anti cancer drugs. For so for this, we use the uh, leucoborine as an antidote. Now let's proceed toward uh, some support humors that must be taken for the uh, improving the condition, improving the condition of the patients. So for this, we may either use the uh, oxygen 
therapy uh, to uh, handle the hypoxia or uh, even uh, probability of the some patients. And then uh, we can uh, must correct the uh, BP of the patient through the fluid therapy. And also uh, if there is uh, some cardiac arrhythmias, so that must be uh, properly, uh, so proper supervision should be done regarding the arrhythmias and how to reverse that, like the uh, digoxin toxicity. And then uh, the correction of the gut plasma chemistry, like the acidosis and alkalosis should be uh, corrected. And then some uh, airway uh, measures should be taken to correct the uh, airway uh, of the uh, patient uh, through the suction apparatus. So these are some supporting measures like the correcting the oxygens, I uh, mean oxygenation of the patients um, to prevent the hypoxia or the ischemia. And then uh, some vital signs like the BP or the heart rate, uh, etc., or the respiratory rates even. Or uh, we can also correct the patient uh, different types of the arrhythmias. And then in the blood chemistry, that is the acidosis and alkalosis should be properly treated because this can directly cause the data the individuals and even uh, the clearing of the airway through the uh, section apparatus. So this was the supporting myos. Now, uh, after the uh, proper management of the patient is done, then the proper uh, monitoring of the patient should be done after the episode of poisoning is over. So for that, uh, after the patient is recovered from the adverse effect, so it is important to monitor the patient for some time uh, because it can help in, uh, in the future's incidents or the occurrence of bad poisonings or even uh, we must properly handle the patient if before he goes or discharge the uh, uh, discharge from the hospitals or the uh, healthcare facilities. So this step is necessary and performed to ensure that there is no other complication in the uh, patient uh, situation. And then after ensuring that patient is uh, fully recovered from the poisoning, so then uh, he or she is allowed to go. Uh, now in this section, I will uh, give a slight touch toward the uh, different types of the uh, um, poisonings uh, and then uh, their signs and symptoms and uh, management. So here, let's uh, again define the poisoning that the condition uh, produced by a poison or toxic substances is known as the poisonings. And then uh, we will proceed toward the ethanol and what are the signs and symptoms. So actually the ethanol causes the chronic uh, hepatic and gastrointestinal injuries and some signs and symptoms include the coma, the stupors, and the, especially the respiratory repression and the hypothermia. And even it can, uh, from high concentration, it can cause the death of the patient as well. So uh, now what should be the treatment of the ethanol poisoning? So the administration of medication to cause emesis is, uh, is not recommended. I mean, it is contraindicated in case of the ethanol poisoning because uh, rapid onset of CNS depression uh, and due to the risk of expiration. So because of these two reasons, we didn't uh, uh, induce vomiting in the ethanol poisoning patients. And so the other approach is using the activated charcoals. Um, the activated charcoal is, by the way, is also not recommended for the alcohol uh, uh, ingestion because it binds to hydrocarbon or alcohol. And so that will be also not effective. So for the ethanol poisoning, the best way is the hemodialysis, efficient, clearly, uh, efficiently clear the ethanol from the blood. So the one uh, most important approach in case of the ethanol poisoning is the use of the hemodialysis because in such type of the patients, the uh, activated charcoal and also the MSS uh, is contraindicated. Now let's proceed toward the barbiturates. As we all know, the barbiturates are the sedative and hypnotic agents. In the first instance, the uh, first one was the benzodiazepine. There is the sedative and hypnotic agent that advised to the uh, GABA air receptor and then the chloride and flux occur and then the sinus depression and this is mostly used in the uh, different types of the insomnia as it is in some other cases like the uh, different epileptic condition like the status asthmaticus etc. So but in higher doses it causes a lot of troubles and problems to the patients. So barbiturates are sedative and hypnotic agents uh, at lower doses barbiturate causes the restlessness or the emotional tension but uh, when the dose increases Sedation is followed by anesthesia and then eventually the death of the patient. So these are the some uh, clinical features of the uh, barbiturate poison. And what are the some signs and symptoms that may include the neurologicals or the CNS uh, manifestation, the lethargy, the hypothermia, even the vertigo, 
the slur speech and the ataxia and even the coma and the poor judgment. So these are the some uh, different signs and symptoms and also the uh, deliriums, the uh, skin problems, and even some hypotension. So these are the different signs and symptoms of the barbiturate poisoning and how we will uh, treat the barbiturate uh, poisoning. So the first one is the cardio or respiratory support should be done and the clear way must be first uh, uh, clear. The airway must be cleared through the uh, section apparatus or through the insertion of the oral ears, through the mouth, by the way. And this, uh, we can also then the correction and the dehydration through the uh, fluid therapy. And then we can also perform the gastric leverage and also the activated charcoal is also administered through the uh, nasogastric tube to manage the pressure of the barbiturate poisoning. And uh, uh, measures should be taken regarding the removal of the barbiturates because barbiturates are the uh, 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 basic agents, so the urine must be as, uh, make acidify. So we must acidify the urines, so uh, that will help in the uh, elimination of the barbiturates. Uh, false viruses, the hemodialysis, so these are the different measures the, uh, that must be taken regarding the barbiturates wisely. And the antidote for the barbiturate is the uh, sodium succinate is used as antidote for the barbiturates wisely. Uh, as we have already mentioned, the uh, the antidote for the benzodiazepine was flomazine. And then uh, the digitalis, this may cause the confusion, the uh, irregular pulse, the loss of appetites, or even some geometry problems like the nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea, or the palpitations. And there is also some visual changes uh, within the digitalis poisonings. And then, uh, so uh, additional symptoms that may include the decreased consciousness, uh, decreased output, especially the uh, urine output, that is the oligouria, or even the difficulty in the breathing uh, when lying down, etc. So these all are the different symptoms of the digital poisoning. And the treatment include the GID contamination, the electrolyte imbalance should be properly corrected. And then, uh, so that can be done through the, uh, especially the hypokalemia increase uh, digoxin cardiac sensitivity and should be collected because in the digoxin toxicity there is the hypokalemia mean the potassium level is low down the normal level of potassium is 3.5 to 5 uh, milliequivalent per uh, liter so that should be properly corrected and then the empty uh, dysrhythmic agent should be given to correct the arrhythmias and the antidote for the uh, Digitalis toxicity is, by the way, uh, digibind or the FAB pregnant of the uh, digitalis antibody. And then the strychnine, there is also a dog poison used for the, is a dog, uh, to kill the dogs. So, uh, and this is actually alkalides are obtained from the strychnus nut swimica. And first of all, this was used as a rodent science. And this is the chemical structure of the um, strychnine. And these are the uh, some signs and symptoms of the uh, the uh, strychnine poisoning. But the um, within 10 to 20 minutes after the exposure to the strychnine, the body muscles begin to spasm, starting from the head to the neck. And the spasm is then spread to every muscles uh, of the body, and then uh, continuous convulsion uh, and again it get worsen with the side stimulus because it uh, stimulates the sodium and calcium channels and there then further problem uh, arises. So that uh, death comes from the strychnine poisoning due to the uh, asphyxiation, mean the, uh, the problem or the loss of the respiratory system. Or uh, even the, uh, through the paralysis of the neural pathway that control the breathings or the exhaustion from the convulsion. So the main two feature that is responsible for the strychnine poisoning death is the either the asphyxiation or the uh, the uh, exhaustion from the convulsion. The subject died, but within uh, two to three hours after exposure to strychnine. And then uh, the treatment should be done properly, especially the activated charcoal uh, infusion is given, and also some anti convulsion agent should be given. Uh, if the patient survived the first uh, 24 hours, and then uh, the most important treatment for the strychnine poisoning uh, that is currently used, and uh, that was the uh, administering of the titanic acid 
that will precipitate the uh, straightening and can reverse back its uh, harmful effect. So we can uh, properly manage the straightening poisoning patients through the activated charcoal, anticonvulsant, and the use of plenic acid agents. Now, uh, the most important uh, tyrosines, that is the narcotics, that is uh, mostly used by the IV drug abusers. So narcotic drugs are those uh, that dull the senses, or relieve the pain and soothe the feeling that may cause the euphoria, that is the uh, feeling uh, or sense of well-being and induce the sleep. Uh, these drugs commonly leads to addictions that may be either the uh, physical or the psychological dependence and this include the heroin, the morphine and uh, mephiridine and also methadone. All these are the narcotics agents. And some signs and symptoms of the narcotic agent is the drowsiness, the nausea, vomitings, there is the uh, GRT disturbances problem, and then and the meiosis, there is the constriction of the fulfill, and the respiratory depression, or even the cyanosis, mean uh, bluish color of the uh, lips, or even the fingertips, etc., and the coma, and even the seizures. And the uh, antidote for the, uh, uh, and the antidote, for the uh, upward poisoning as the analyzone. So this was uh, all about the uh, different types of the uh, poisoning agent and then uh, their sign and symptom and treatment. So uh, in this video tutorial, if we uh, concluded, so we have studied uh, a lot of agents uh, that may be either that the, what are the uh, toxicology, and then uh, the, <clears throat> if we proceed toward the first slide, that what we have studied. So uh, mainly we have studied a lot of things in this uh, video tutorial. <clears throat> first of all, the uh, definition of the uh, toxicology, then the sub branches of the toxicology that may be either the uh, clinical toxicology, environmental toxicology, or the experimental toxicology. Then we proceed told that uh, or how we will manage the patient on the toxicology through the uh, decrease absorption, uh, increase elimination. And so these two approaches were used to uh, manage the patient on the poisoning. And the uh, first one was, by the way, identify the cause. And then uh, some support humans, and at the last, the monitoring of the patient. So this was all regarding the clinical toxicology. So thank you all for your time and stay blessed.